International Jurors and Academy of Sciences, the Atmosphere and Climate Competence Center, the Institute of Atmospheric and Earth System Research, the Finnish Network for Atmospheric Sciences, Finnish Geophysical Society and Finnish Foundation for Arsenal Research together has decided to establish this new award. On Wednesday, tomorrow, we work on a climate change and equality forum, green transition, opening or launch of ACCC innovation forum. And international perspective, it remarks by, by different ministers and EU representatives. And then we are going also to have parallel session, co-designing group discussion meetings, ACCC innovation forum and stakeholders connections and uh, also towards coherent and coordinated atmospheric observation system, both peaks and global observatory point of view. Thursday is the day for this ACCC Arctic dimension, Arctic science collaboration, ASCA perspectives, and we have for example, uh, species by President Tarja Halonen and Prince Albert II of Monaco, and President uh, Lars Kullerud from U Arctic. And also we are making Arctic research uh, SWOT analysis, key gaps of research infrastructures and data, and also future research needs. This is Thursday. On Friday, okay, also some words about this, this ASK arena for the gap analysis of the existing Arctic science co uh, cooperations. This is coming from our ASK. Friday is then related to the Sofia Earth Forum activities, what we have had also before, uh, ACCC Climate Change Equality Society Roundtable for Stakeholders, and we have talks by Ambrosius, Tapio Luoma, Juhani Damski, Anita Lehikonen, Kimmo Tiilikainen and myself, and also we have other panel, panel discussion, climate actions by societies and civil engagement, and uh, with moderator Saana, Saara Kankarvinta. And uh, one word about ACCC, we have three research programs. Uh, potential, uh, first one is potential for, of land-based climate change mitigation, second is air quality climate interactions, third one is climate change impacts and adaptation, and uh, then we have 13 different uh, impact uh, impact uh, programs or boost projects. Okay, thank you, and I now declare this uh, our ACCC Impact Week open. Thanks, and if I remember correctly, with, with these uh, things, uh, was it Ambrosius, the next one? Welcome. Dear scientists and uh, all stakeholders, cordially welcome to Sofia Center. This is our fourth Sofia Earth Forum. And it's, uh, it's very important that we together make further plans and uh, pursuits towards clean air and safe environment and climate. You welcome both in person and, and also via internet connections. Uh, the word Sophia returns and take, refers to wisdom, not only to knowledge between ears, but also to heart and inner wisdom in a holistic way. And uh, I trust that this is also our fundamental and final aim, but we, we need to discuss how we reach that. The primus motor of this forum, the academician Marco Kulmala, reminds us all of the prophets of the Old Testament, who clearly saw the enormous threats of their time and ins ins insisted people to change their lifestyles. Marco, like a prophet of the Old Testament, right? But the, the difference to Marco is that uh, 
is, re is nevertheless remarkable. Marco does not uh, threaten us by fire, fiery coals and burning sulfur like uh, some of the prophets in the Old Testament. Also, we would have, also he would have reason to do so, I suppose. Indeed, Marco shares our gentle and also humanistic uh, perspective and trusts on our desire to learn and to turn a new leaf in climate challenges and our, our approach and our, our practices concerning these challenges. In our churches these days we are heading towards Christmas, it's uh, the Advent season. This season includes uh, pre-Christmas fasting and it is and still Ha and has been a concrete call to emphasize a vegetarian diet and focus on slower lifestyle. And it is certainly we should reflect these days, all of us. And by saying this, I feel ashamed of myself as a church leader. Not particularly because my fasting habits have not been very active, they have been minimalistic, but uh, I feel a bit ashamed for another reason. And this is because our Christian churches have made our faith too reductionist and spiritualistic. We interpret our religion uh, and salvation almost solely as being individualistic and unrelated to everyday life, to material life. Even in the Lord's Prayer, instead of saying the original, forgive us our debts, we keep saying, forgive our sins. At the same time, we all know that uh, Christian tradition maintains uh, a remarkably high view of nature and all creation, which Lord has created good and beautiful. We should uh, relearn to regard nature not only as an object, but as a reality. It is high time for us to con convert our long sermons to committed action. At the same time, we are grateful, first of all, to the Green Movement, which has knocked our consciences for 50 years already. And today we give special thanks to all of you researchers of climate and environment. The conclusions and results of your work are just representatives of the Patriarch of Moscow and the Catholic Church from the Vatican to this event. Unfortunately, due to pandemic uh, situation, they are unable to be present this time. Nevertheless, uh, the Catholic encyclical Laudato Si serves as the most profound Christian document concerning environment issues to date. So I think Marco and others, there may be some hope for our salvation as well. Thank you.
Dear guests, my name is Maivor van Ranken and Finnish Ecumenical Council is a Christian organization, one of the oldest ecumenical movements in the world. It was grounded 1917. We have 11 church members, five observer churches and 27 companionship organizations. Today I will have a short speech from a Christian perspective of climate changes. Bible says like this, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. As Christians, we need to have a global climate stewardship. We are co-workers to God and have a responsibility to take care of the world that God has created. What do churches and Christian organizations have to say about the climate crisis? We know that the Earth's climate changes quickly and dramatically. Carbon dioxide and methane are warming up the atmosphere and it leads to higher temperatures and more extreme weather. This causes, for example, climate refugees. People must leave their homes because they can't survive there anymore. We must together ensure that the global temperature does not increase more than one and a half degrees centigrade. What is our organization doing? What can churches and organizations to do together? Finnish Ecumenical Council has every year in October a responsibility week with different themes. It's a ec ecumenical week. This year, 2021, the theme was moderation. The theme is based on climate action. The material includes sustainability book a Christian faith perspective on the sustainable development goals. And it is based on the 2030 Agenda for Sustainability Development from United Nations with 17 goals. The book demands individuals, Christian fellowships, churches, local congregations and Christians and so on to think what climate solutions and practical solutions they can find together to reduce consumption in daily action and choices in everyday life. We have translated this book from English to Finnish and Swedish language and you see down here, the English version website. An example from this book. One of the goals in the Agenda 2030 is uh, goal number 13, climate action. And an example from the sustainability book is challenge churches and Christians organizations. We cannot solve the climate crisis unless politicians take action. How can you as church or Christian organizations challenge politicians at the local and national level to cut greenhouse gas emissions in line with the Paris Agreement? See the climate crisis, challenge, act, encourage, and support action on climate change. 
Thank you so much and hopefully we have good days together. Thank you very much, my lord. And uh, the next one is Arto Mainpa from Yenne and Antti Vihurpalmi. Dear attendees of the ACCC Impact Week, my name is Arto Mänma and I'm the executive director of Jenny and Antti Vihuri Foundation, one of the supporters of this event. We are a private foundation established in the middle of the Second World War in 1942 and based in Helsinki. We support science, art and societal activities with grants. In addition, we have our own initiatives such as a Biomedical Vihuri Research Institute in Helsinki Biomedicum. The concept of intergenerationality has been a guiding principle in the work of the Vihuri Foundation. We believe that the now 79-year-old foundation should still exist in 100 years from now, so that the future generations will have the equal opportunity to create and experience and experience art, do research, and live fulfilling lives. However, the promise of a foundation that will be standing here after all that time is empty and useless if the world surrounding us is disappearing slowly. Climate change sometimes manifests itself as a scary movie-like spectacle. For example, when wildfires were raging around the world, or when entire towns were washed away in Germany. Often it's showing its less dramatic nature. You open the newspaper one day and read a small article about new flooding gates being built in your neighborhood. No drama, no fuss, even when there ought to be. As humans, our habit of accustoming is a double-edged sword. It's crucial for the survival of our species and at the same time the problem itself. When we accustom, we might lose the feeling of urgency needed to act. At the foundation, we are firm believers of science in producing information and solutions needed to solve these problems. The work of scientists like Akademissa Marko Kulmala and his colleagues around the world is essential for the well-being of future generations. However, research is not enough if it's not put into action. Therefore, we need partnerships between public and private sectors and global dialogue between all the stakeholders. As a foundation, we also want to do our part by financing projects, tackling climate change, loss of biodiversity and environmental degradation. With these words, I wish you an excellent conference week. Thank you.